Today, I'm going to show you how to create a packaging design mock-up in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com, where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is really cool, especially helpful for you guys who are designing like, let's say some logo packaging design, things like that for your clients. It happens all the time when your client's like, okay, this logo looks right. Can I see this on a box? Can I see it on a billboard? Can I see it on this or that? And you can do all that stuff in Photoshop. You don't actually have to, you know, make the whole box and all the packaging and stuff. So we're going to show you how, basically how to take a logo and transfer it onto anything in Photoshop. This is a really cool episode. We're going to be using the vanishing point filter to actually map out the sides of a box in Photoshop. And then we're going to go ahead and copy our logo onto the clipboard and paste it. And it's going to allow us to paste it into perspective on the box. It's going to be a great episode, guys. Let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. Here are our images for today. We've got a box coming down an assembly line. This is just a stock image here. And then I've got a little logo that I created for, let's say I was, you know, doing some design for a box company. Box, you make it, we ship it. Pretty simple. So we have this logo and basically I want to slap this label onto this box and I want to do it and make sure that it's in perfect perspective. So the first thing I'm going to do is use my move tool here. We're going to use our move tool and transfer from one image to another. Now I'm going to hold the shift key down. That's going to copy it to the center. So shift and from one image, just click and drag to another. And it may ask you to convert your color space. That's totally okay. We'll hit convert and hit okay. And here we go. Now I'm going to hit F for full screen. Now, the first thing you may notice is that our logo is huge. It's really, really big. So I'm going to go ahead and transform it, make it a little bit smaller. So let's hit control or command T for our transform dialog. And here on the very top, we can see our width and our height. Both are a hundred percent. I'm going to link them together by clicking on this chain link icon. And then I can just simply click on the W or the H and then drag to the left. And it's just going to size it down a little bit. All right. Pretty easy way to size that down. And you want it to be about the size that it's going to be on the final. In this case, we're going to make it a little bit larger. Okay, so now comes the fun part. Basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this logo onto the clipboard in Photoshop. So it's gonna store it. That's where anytime you do like a copy and paste on your computer, that's it's stored in your clipboard. So we're gonna go ahead and store this in our clipboard and then use our vanishing point filter and then we can basically take what's in our clipboard and then pop it onto our object in perspective. All right, it's gonna be really cool. Let's go ahead and jump in. So to get our logo on the clipboard here, it's just on a new layer. You can see what I want to do is make a selection around this layer. So you could do that with your marquee tool if you wanted. But in this case, if I just want to select just what's on a layer, you can hit control or command and click on the thumbnail of the layer and it turns it into a selection. There we go. So we have our selection. Now I want to go ahead and copy this to the clipboard. So control or command C is how to copy to your clipboard. Okay. The same thing if you were in any like word document or whatever, control or command C. Okay. So now that it's selected, I really don't need it anymore. It's like, it's in my clipboard. So I'm going to go ahead and make this layer invisible. I'm going to deselect by going to select and down to deselect. And we're going to create a new layer. Now this is the layer where we want to apply our vanishing point filter. So again, my logo is in the clipboard now. That's really important. Okay. So here on the new layer, we're going to go to filter and down to vanishing point. All right. Now this is a cool, cool place. And if you haven't played around in the vanishing point filter before, well, we're going to show you how to use it. Basically it's a way where you can create perspective planes in Photoshop. So we're going to start off using this tool right up here. This is our create plane tool. And the nice thing about this is it pretty much tells you exactly what to do. So let's go ahead and start off by clicking on the corners of our box. So we're going to click here. All right. Each corner. There we go. And click there. And here we have our perspective grid. Now I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here because we want this to be pretty accurate. We want the perspective grid to like really give a good representation of the box. So with the same tool selected, we're just going to use the edit plane tool here. Let me just go ahead and cover up our, our standard tools within Photoshop. So it's not confusing. Okay. 
here we go. We're on the edit plane tool. So I've created my plane. Now I just want to click on each one of these corners and I want to bring them to the corners of the actual box. Okay. This will come down a little bit lower, but basically you're creating your perspective here and you really want to nail this as, as good as you can, because this is what's going to term, determine the perspective of your logo. Okay. There we go. So basically we've created a perspective around this area here on the box. So we're almost there guys. This was really the hard part. So we've got our logo, it's copied onto our clipboard, and now we've drawn a perspective plane around one side of our box. So next what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and paste our logo in and it's going to paste it into perspective. So to get our logo onto our vanishing point filter, I just need to hit control or command V. That's the keyboard shortcut for paste. So control or command V, there we go. And it's going to go ahead and paste it right here. So you can see it's here. It's not in perspective just yet. So the first thing I want to do, I want to go ahead and transform this because it's, it's still pretty big, right? We want it to be a little bit smaller. So here, when it's still selected, let's hit control or command T and it'll tell you here, just hit T to transform. You can do all these things. So let's hit T for transform. Now I'm going to click on one of these corners and hold the shift key down and just make it a little bit smaller. There we go. So we've got our perspective, our perspective plane still active here and we've got our logo. Now I'm going to click here on my marquee tool. Okay. And with our marquee tool selected, I can simply click on my logo. I can move this anywhere around the image, just like we would in normal Photoshop world. But if I hover over top of this area, you're going to see it automatically transforms into perspective, which is very, very cool because well, transforming like a, you know, <laughs> transforming just a regular like flat image into perspective makes it look a lot more real. Okay. Now it's still a little too big. So I'm going to hit T for the transform again, hold the shift key to make sure I'm maintaining my aspect ratios there. And we're going to move it right to about there. All right. Really cool. So this is like, if your client says like, what would my logo look like on a box? Well, now you know exactly how to do it. So the other cool thing we can do here is we have our logo pretty much applied to the side of the box. If we just hit enter here, it's good to go. And then it's, it's on there, but you can actually build out more planes in this same window. So let's say you wanted to apply a logo onto multiple sides of a box. Well, we're going to show you how to do that right now. Jumping back into Photoshop, I'm going to go ahead and use my edit plane tool. Let's go ahead and click here to select our plane. There we go. Now I'm going to go back to my, create plane tool. And it's, you, you're going to see right here, it says tear off perpendicular planes from the stretch nodes of existing planes. And you're like, what the heck does that mean? Um, basically, if you have one plane already decided, you can go ahead and build out this guy from it. So we're going to, we're going to build out the other side of the box. Now it's really easy to do. Just make sure you're selected on your create plane tool. Okay. And then here, just hold control or command and click on the side of one of your planes. And you're going to see we've got like four little boxes as an icon there. So hold control or command, and we're just going to click there and drag out in this direction. All right. Which is really cool. So you can see basically we've got our front plane and our side plane there. Now, as I zoom in, I'm just going to hit control or command plus a little bit. You can see it's not perfect. And it's because we did a pretty good job when we created our first plane, but we can see it needs a little bit of tweaking. So all you have to do is grab your corners here. All right. We're just going to pull these up. There we go. Now there are going to be some areas where it's like, it's going to kind of fight you with it. If you're trying to create something that it, it doesn't think is good to be, if it doesn't think you're creating the right perspective, it's going to try to fight you. So just keep going with it and you'll be able to see here. We were able to drag that out and here we're in the right perspective now. Okay. So we've created one side of the box in perspective, which is totally cool. And now we've created the other side of the box also in perspective. So we still have our logo on our clipboard. If I want to paste our logo back into the image, now I'm going to be able to choose which side of the box I want my logo to be on. So here in Photoshop, we're still in our vanishing point filter. Remember, let's just go to our select plane. So we have our first plane and re remember we built out this second plane from our first plane. So, and I still have my logo in my clipboard. Okay. So if I want to paste the logo in again, all I have to do is hit control or command V and that's going to go ahead and paste. There we go. Now let's hit T for transform because we're going to make this a little smaller. 
There we are. And now we we'll simply click here and drag it onto this box. But now check this out. Because I went ahead and loaded the other side of this box, we could simply just transform it from one to another and it's going to transform with perspective, which is just absolutely nuts. It's really cool. So let's hold down the shift key. Let's go ahead and make sure that we're right about lined up there. All right, that looks pretty cool. And now I can see our logo is on the box in two different places. So we have this on the front and on the side, which is really, really cool. So let's go ahead and hit okay there. Now, because I was on a new layer, you're going to see it's just on a new layer. So I can, you know, use my move tool if I wanted and I can, I can move this anywhere I want or I can just do this again. You can see it's not like, it's not completely tied to my image. So as far as like creating our actual like logo or like package here on the box, it looks really, really good. Looks like it's in the right perspective. So the next thing I want to do is we got a little bit of a blur on the box. In other words, like the, the photograph itself kind of like goes out of focus a little bit. So I'm going to show you how to blur these logos to match the focus of the box. So you can see here our logos look really good. Now, the only problem we have is the edge of our logo, you can see, doesn't exactly match what's going on here in our image because it, our image actually goes out of focus and you can see our, our label is actually like perfectly, <laughs> perfectly in focus. So we're going to go ahead and add a blur to this. Now, there are a ton of different types of blurs in Photoshop. In this case, I want to create a gradual blur. I want to go from like an in focused area to an out of focused area. And a great way to do that is with the tilt shift blur. So let's show you how to do that. Jumping back in, we're going to click on our image. Now I'm going to convert this to a smart object. Basically anytime you do a blur in Photoshop, it's a really good idea to make it a smart object. So we're going to right click and go to convert to smart object. That way if you don't like your blur, you can change it at any time. You don't have to like go undo it and then redo it. It, it, it makes it much easier. So now that we have our layer with our labels selected, it's a smart object. We're going to go to filter down to blur gallery and over to tilt shift. Okay, now tilt shift blur by default is going to be vertical, okay? It's basically like if you wanna make mock tilt shift and I'll go ahead and add a blur so you guys can see what it does here. So basically what it would do is blur like the top and the bottom of an image. And in this case, you can just see it on, there we go, if I bring this down, you can see it there on my label, okay? So it goes from, in the center is a non-blurred area. Let's bring that back a little bit. The center is a non-blurred area. There we go. And then here you have feathering, and then this is your blurred area, okay? So if you wanted to go from top to bottom, you could do that. But in this case, we're gonna rotate it around. So I'm gonna click here on one of these nodes, just right outside, you'll see a little rotate icon. I'm gonna click and drag this down, and I'm gonna hold the shift key, and we're gonna rotate that to straight up and down. So let's bring this back in here in this, the, into the center. Okay, so now this area is not going to be blurred. Okay, here we have our feathering. Let's go ahead and pull these areas. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these areas in so we do have a tiny bit of blur even towards the center of our box. There we go. Then we can pull our blurred area out to make our transition nice and natural. There we go. Let's do the same thing with this one here. Okay, and now we can simply adjust our blur. So. Let's zoom in. I'm gonna hit Command Plus a couple times to zoom in. And man, that looks so much better. So simply adjusting your blur. So this is like the before and adding a little bit of blur. Okay, if, in this case, I'm gonna add a little bit too much blur. Okay, and hit okay. And show you why it's a really good idea to do a smart object. So um, we added too much blur just then. And you can see, yep, that's too much blur. Now, because we made this a smart object, I can turn that blur off and on, which is cool. Like the smart filters, I can just turn that off and on. Or if I wanna add less blur, I can use all the same settings, just lower down my blur. Because I used a smart object, now this blur is showing up as a smart filter. So to change that, simply double click on the smart filter itself. And in this case, all I have to do is lower the amount of blur. There we go, that looks pretty good. And hit okay again. Cool, and there is our image with a really nice amount of blur on there, and it looks a lot more realistic. So that's why I suggest whenever you are gonna do a blur, I really suggest making it a smart object first because then if you need to change your blur at any time, it becomes really, really easy.
Okay, and there we have it, guys. So this is our logo slapped onto two sides of the box using the vanishing point filter, and it even blurs it off into the image to make it look like it's actually a part of the photo. And it does a really good job. Like this is, it, it looks like a lens blur, which is really, really nice. All right, pretty cool stuff, huh? That's all there is to basically just stamping a logo onto any object. Now, in this case, we did a box, but if you had the side of a truck in an image or a billboard or you know anything like that, you could use these exact same techniques to basically put it on any surface you can think of. If you guys want to do this on your own, just follow these key steps. The first thing you're going to need is a logo and a background. Now, in this case, I made my own logo. This box company does not exist. So we've got our two separate images. I use my move tool and click and drag from one image to another, copying it over. Then I went ahead and transformed it, making it quite a bit smaller. We want it to be about the same size it's going to be on the final product. Next, you want to go ahead and copy your logo onto your clipboard. So in this case, hit Control or Command and click on the thumbnail for your layer. That's going to turn it into a selection. And then hit Control or Command C. That's going to go ahead and copy it. Next, go ahead and make your layer invisible. We don't need it anymore. You can deselect. And then on a new layer, go to Filter and down to Vanishing Point. Now, your job in the Vanishing Point filter is basically to create a grid around the surface that you want to paste your logo onto. Now, you can do this by clicking on each of the four corners. It's relatively simple to do, and you can change it at any time. So don't stress about it. You can, if you get it slightly wrong, just click on any of your corners, and you can redo it. And now it's time to get your logo into the Vanishing Point filter. Hit Control or Command V to paste it in. Now, if you need to transform it, hit Control or Command T, and you can make it larger or smaller. Then you want to click and drag it onto the surface that you'd actually like to apply it to, and it's going to transform it into perspective. In this case, we did two sides of a box. So I clicked on the Create Plane tool, and then hold Control or Command and drag out from one of the sides of your existing perspective planes. I know it's a lot to go over. Now, you can paste this in and basically follow all the same steps and hit Enter. And as a bonus, we show you how to blur this to make it look like it's actually a part of the photo. So let's go ahead and turn this into a smart object. You can do that by right clicking and go to Convert to Smart Object. This will allow you to use a smart filter, which means your blur can be changed at any point in time. I suggest doing this anytime you apply a blur in Photoshop. After converting your layer into a smart object, go to Filter, down to Blur Gallery, and over to Tilt Shift. Here you can adjust the settings to make it look realistic in your photo. Hit OK, and if you need to make changes at any point in time, you can do so by simply double clicking on the Blur Gallery icon. And that's all there is to it, guys. Thanks so much for watching today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I know we went over a bunch of complicated tools, but the results are incredibly cool, and your clients are going to love you for it. If you love Photoshop as much as I do, go ahead and click on your screen right about now. We'll send you free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. And if you have an idea for an episode or a question or comment about today's episode, please let me know in a comment right down below. Thanks so much, guys. I'll learn you later. Bye everyone. So here, <laughs> and then it's going to change into the. All right. After cool, your clients. <laughs>